Okay. Today, I will respond to the claim made by Zion that music that is moderate, low, or absent in lyrics <coughs> achieves concentration for doing homework. We have two main uh, supporting claims. First, uh, that the high number of lyrics will distract us until the point where we're making too many mistakes. And secondly, that working with music allows one to work better and be more tuned in uh, because of the mood the music puts us in, especially upbeat music. However, I think that Zion's proposition can be dismissed from a lack of evidence and unreliable studies. Responding to the first supporting claim of a high number of lyrics uh, causing a loss of focus, Zion provides <coughs> insufficient and unreliable grounds to prove this claim. Uh, this supporting claim had only one piece of cited evidence to support the proposition, which is largely insufficient. Additionally, this piece of evidence was based solely on a blog post uh, by Emily M. Hernberg of her ability to write a blog post while listening to music with a moderate number of lyrics, which as a source to be used for evidence is unreliable. Uh, Zion connects this blog post to proving a hierarchical pyramid of someone's ability to focus, but provides no evidence for what or how this pyramid works, and if it is the number of lyrics uh, that is what is causing the distraction or disruption of this hierarchical pyramid. Uh, from a study by researchers of the College of Medicine from Fujian Catholic University in Taiwan on the effects of background music, it was concluded that uh, lyrics and background music negatively affected worker, perform uh, worker attention performance, although background music with, uh, without lyrics also affected their performance. So it does not matter uh, if the music has a high or no number of lyrics, uh, either way it is the music causing the distraction uh, and the, just the noise, not the lyrics themselves. Uh, responding to the second supporting claim uh, that music tunes one in, allowing them to work better, especially with upbeat music, prov provides an inaccurate warrant to make such a claim. Again, there's only one piece of evidence to support the claim, uh, which is made by a research by William Ford Thompson. Uh, there's no quote or paraphrase, paraphrase, simply saying that the music will motivate us and that classical music is preferred. Uh, Zion then links this uh, to because classical music has no lyrics, uh, so it applies to other genres of music uh, that are also typically absent in lyrics. However, uh, from a study in the Journal of Behavioral Medicine, it is not a lack of lyrics that makes classical music uh, favored for studying, but the tempo of the music. Uh, the 60 to 70 beat or tempo of the music of classical music uh, helps slow the heart and ease stress, which in turn helps your concentration for work. Uh, Zion tries to compare this to other non lyrical music, such as jazz and house music, uh, but these genres typically have an average tempo of 120 to 135 uh, beats per minute. So from this, claiming that studies based on classical music can be applied to these other genres uh, is false grounds for evidence. Uh, additionally, the claim that music uh, will aid us by the mood it puts us in uh, is not mentioned at all. Uh, there's no evidence or even reason uh, in his argument uh, for what the mood of the music will help us. Uh, and lastly, uh, he provides irrelevant information at the end of this claim by, again, going back to the hierarchical pyramid. Uh, but this pyramid provides no evidence or grounds uh, for the mood or productivity of the music. And again, is not addressed or explained how this works at all. Um, so in conclusion, Zion's claim that music that is moderate, lower absent lyrics achieves concentration for doing homework can be dismissed because his supporting claims are insufficient, unreliable, and irrelevant evidence. Thank you. This is my line. Okay. Thank you.
All right. Well, you uh, the the structure you go after is is pretty easy to follow. So there are only two supporting claims. You go after each of those pretty directly. It's not that hard to follow what you're saying. On the first point, uh, you are basically disputing the notion that it's got anything to do with uh, the lyrics uh, and the the absence of proof on this particular point. I thought was. You know, you, you had the one blog post that was cited by the advocate. You came back with another uh, piece of information that suggested that it's, you know, it's not really related to the lyrics at all. There's no, and this whole discussion of the hierarchical pyramid uh, is, like you said, it's kind of a hypothetical that doesn't get explained very clearly. Uh, that's your that's your press on this point, and that that's fine. It, I, I got the idea about what you're trying to say there. Uh, your label on the second point is a little bit more direct because you, in essence, say there's an absence of evidence, there's evidence that leads to a different conclusion, and there's actually a different source for whatever benefit there is from the music that we're listening to. Well, that was a lot uh, you know, clearer. You, you had to have a lot more explanation on the first point. On the second point, uh, it seems like the response is more direct and the evidence is more useful. The summary point, I think, is also good, kind of giving us the essence of what your argument is. So um, you did what you were supposed to do on this particular point. That seems good. Thank you.